also joining us on the line uh, from uh, Stafford in uh, North Midlands is Karis Lock. Karis, hello. Hello. Hi, how are you doing? I'm all right, how are you? I'm very good, thanks so much for taking time out to join us. Um, we're talking Raspberry Pi. Yes, and we are. We're, we're talking the Raspberry Pi Jam. Now, let's just start from the beginning, so this is quite a remarkable story and I know you've had quite a lot of interest on media and press and all sorts of different people so just start us from the very beginning what is a Raspberry Pi? A Raspberry Pi is a computer um, that can cost from £4 to about 30 um, and it's remarkable and it's tiny it's about the size of a credit card so and these came out around was it 2012? yeah something um, about it that was um, February 2012, the 29th of February. <laughs> <laughs> she know, know. The, see, you know your yeah. stuff. This is this is what's I know amazing. My uh, um, when did you first become involved? Um, well, originally it was about last year. Okay. And before the summer holidays in 2015, I thought to myself, well, what can I do over the summer holidays? And I originally got a 16-year-old laptop. Right. Um, it didn't work at all, and I um, wiped it and everything, and it still didn't work really, so I took that and thought, what else can I do instead? So, in sort of around June, July time, I actually found Raspberry Pi on the internet, and I was like, oh, why not try this? And sort of escalated from there, really. So, you actually went to find, you wanted a, a computer for a reason, you had this six, was it the laptop given to you, or did you sort of go and find it from somewhere? The, the 16 year old oh yeah. it was sort of like given to me um, my dad runs a shop so he sort of gave it to me um, because I wanted another laptop for no reason really I just like building them and messing with them and everything um, and you know I just tried to get it working it, and it did sort of work but it wasn't very fast at all yeah but, so it was an interest in actually what the computers were and you wanted more than just you wanted a computer to watch Netflix on or yeah I mean yeah. I love getting in the inside of computers and finding all the motherboard and CPU and RAM and everything and just sort of getting everything out and putting it back in and changing whatever um, is inside it um, and then I love making software as well um, I'm not really good at it, but I still do it. <laughs> you see, this is now, we're going to put some context into this, okay? We're going to talk about the Raspberry Pi Jam in a moment, but you're still at school. I'm still at school. And now. I don't mean to, the problem is, whenever you talk about this, I think I sound patronising, and I apologise <laughs> that I don't mean to be patronising to you, but I'm just, even now, I'm struggling to get my head around this. You're 14 years old. Yeah. <laughs> and. You're a girl. Yeah. Um, you know, it's. I'm like, wow. So, I mean, wh where did this this come from? This interest. Well, I'm not sure really, and um, that doesn't really help. Oh, um, my, a lot of my family's into electronics and computing, and um, like I said, my dad and my uncles have a shop, so they sort of learn how, as they went along. Yeah. Uh, and I've always had all the old hand-me-down laptops and um, built on them and, you know, done all the stuff that geeks do. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. Um, so let's move this along to the Raspberry Pi Jam. So we've got the Raspberry Pi, which is the single board, low-cost computers. And then we we have the Raspberry Pi Jam. Now, what's that? It's sort of a meet-up for Raspberry Pi geeks, <laughs> uh -huh. um, or BBC Micro geeks. <laughs> I, d I wouldn't and possibly know about that, but. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, we have a mis massive meet-up, and we have loads of fun, and you know, we d um, people do talks on what projects they've done. Um, yeah, and all sorts of different things happen. So. Now these these events have been happening since roughly 2012, up and down the UK and overseas in Europe, North America, even as far as Australia. And I mean, I've I've have, I have an interest in computing myself. But Anna, you've been to a few jams with me as well, haven't you? I have. So yeah. I mean, we've both been to them, uh, and we've been to them organised by universities and schools, and some of them have actually collapsed. They're not they're not running, and these are sort of um, <coughs> you know people that are in the profession that can't actually string a jam together for more than one session 
but you have managed, Keres, you've managed to do this and run how many Raspberry Pi jams have you actually organised now? Um, I think this is the seventh. Seventh. So you've done. So you've you've done a full season. Yeah. Of Raspberry Pi jams. How did your local school? Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. And it's it's just like it's just incredible, really. You know, uh, I mean, what 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 do people think when you try and you know get hold of resources or equipment or you know what do they say to you? Uh, they can't believe it, to be honest. Um, I don't really understand why myself, but like you said, um, it's sort of like people don't think like a fourteen-year-old girl can do it. A girl, especially because mm. they shouldn't really be into geeky things. It's more of a male sort of thing. But I don't believe in that at all. Like everyone should be able to access the same resources and the same. Um, learning equipment and all that sort of stuff. What about uh, what do your fi friends and family think? Do they think it's rather odd, or what he's touching on before that? Because you know your dad that has a shop. Do they think it's quite normal and quite happy to carry on with it as well? Um, some of them think it's a bit weird, I think. But um, you know, generally, I have quite a lot of support from my family and friends, which I'm lucky to have. Um, yeah, and I think they sort of enjoy watching me do it as well, particularly like my uncle and my dad, they're quite they're quite um, into the electronics and stuff, so that's sort of, yeah. <laughs> With the pie jams, have you found that doing them, you've had people come from farther reaches, maybe other schools, and that you've gathered more friends from that to learn about different things from one another? Um, definitely, yeah. I mean... Um, I also sometimes go up to a Raspberry Jam in Preston and oh. like the other day someone just made me uh, 3D printed um, Pi Zero cake. Oh wow, well, okay. That's just sort of fantastic, like there's a whole community that sort of connects with each other and yeah. knows what everyone else is talking about. So, I mean, so your Pi Jam has, has built a lot of momentum. Uh, it's now I mean, you you're, you call it the Staffordshire Raspberry Pi Jam, don't you? Because that's where you're yeah. based in in Stafford, Staffordshire, which is a uh, for those of us, uh, people listening uh, overseas don't know England that well. It's a kind of a northern central England county, um, and th they were one or two others in that area. They've all sort of died a death, um, and this is just it. Is you know, it's just amazing how you've kept the momentum going. I mean, what sort of problems have you actually come across in trying to get this together? It's plenty. <laughs> um, no, um, originally we had the van venue problem. Um, obviously, my school helped a lot with that. Um, and now we're moving on to a new venue, so that's fantastic. Um, and I'm having some funding help behind that. Um, we've had sort of equipment struggling as well. So originally we had no Raspberry Pis at all. Um, and some fabulous people from Fab Lab in London. Um, they've given me about 20 Raspberry Pis and Pi Moroni has also gave me quite a few Raspberry Pis and various other people have given me other fantastic things so thank you. That sounds brilliant. So I have another question then. Going about these Raspberry Pis, somebody new to coming to Raspberry Pis, would they actually need to bring one with them? Not necessarily. I've got all the Raspberry Pis um, now. I've got quite a few now uh, so we can plug a couple of um, ones in just to uh, play about with and um, watch people and people can ha other people can help each other as well uh, so you can go find out what the Raspberry Pi is for then decide what you want to do and if you want to have one yourself yeah do you have one type or do you have the different types of the Raspberry Pis from the originals up to the uh, zeros I have quite a few different types um, not all of them because that's a bit of a struggle <laughs> but um you know i've i've collected quite a few from various people which is fantastic and again thank you for everyone's help um yeah so we've got a couple of older ones got a couple of newer ones whatever everybody wants and they've all got different specifications as well so depending on what sort of you know project you want to build then therefore you can pick the right recipe pie to do it yeah. So, I mean, you say projects. What sort of projects have people been working on within your um, Pi Jam group? Um, robots, media centers, software projects, so like applications and stuff. Um, yeah, all sorts of different things. Uh, now, you mentioned about some of the software and programming. That's an area that 
particularly interests me. So what are you personally working on um, sort of with software and coding at the moment that maybe you could talk to us about? Well, I've actually just gone into GCSE year, so um, we, ah, right. we've just started everything in IT um, and, and we're trying to do this animal sanctuary based thing and I've done like a dog's home and you've got to figure out oh, how much um, a sick dog costs to keep and a healthy dog and a small dog and a big dog and everything and then you've got to sort of put it all in a um, spreadsheet um, and make a website and make a web banner and do all that sort of stuff so yeah all right, I'm okay. a bit busy at the moment. So <laughs> So you've just, because scores have literally gone back, it's um, when we're recording this, it's currently uh, very early September. Um, so you've just started school again. You're now year 10? Correct. Correct, <laughs> yeah, there we go. Yeah. Anna, can you remember being year 10? Vaguely. Vaguely. <laughs> <laughs> remember going back to school and be like, ugh, not this again. That, that's the spirit. Yeah. <laughs> Because um, it, it's not too bad this year because you get what you, you do what you want to do. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah so you haven't got all the boring lessons that you don't want to do anymore. Do, do you do you still uh, did you still do the what, see when I was at school and you got to I think it was year nine, you had to do something called options. Correct. Yeah. Oh, yes. Right. Yeah. Yes. Doing that. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's sort of all the stuff you pick for the next yeah. year. Okay. Uh, yeah. So I've got all my timetable now, and it's literally IT, science, um, computer um, science and geography, and then I've got all the other things that you obviously need to do, but apart from that, yeah, that's pretty much my timetable. <laughs> so you very much positioned yourself to do things like the science and the computing, yeah, side, which yeah. is obviously natural to what you want to do. And so I suppose going forward is once you've done your GCSE, is the end of year 11, it's then on to college. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. You think so? What What do you think? Where do you think your sort of direction might go after you finish school? Um, I do like the sciences, obviously. Um, but I'm, um, I think I might go more towards computer science and um, ICT sort yes. of area. Um, because I do love doing that. Um, like that's the the what I want to do, and um, it will be great to have a job, um, and something you love doing. Oh, abs absolutely. I mean, I think both myself and Anna can talk about yeah, yeah try trying to do what we love. But so <laughs> in because obviously it's been um, I think about nearly five or six years since I finished college. So so I, I haven't really had to look. But are there more computery based courses or coding courses for this sort of area, or have they not changed that much in colleges? I'm not too sure. Um, yeah, I haven't really seen that side of it yet. I think, um, I mean, I've I've had some involvement with colleges. Um, I mean, I'd finished college even, even a longer time, even a long <laughs> time. That was in a sentence. Even a longer time ago. No, that doesn't. Anyway, everyone knows what I mean. Um, I seem to recall uh, they were doing these like media courses and video gaming, video game design. That was the new one. Yeah. And you think to yourself, oh, that might be more about the sort of programming. That would tie in nicely with things like Raspberry Pi. But. Last time I checked, especially in sort of local colleges um, where I live, it was all more about um, designing computer characters and yeah. storyboarding. So the one was like creating movies, and a lot of the prospectuses or tutors went, "Oh yeah, we do a bit of coding sometimes if some of them are who are really keen want to do it." I and think I, I don't know whether it should be like that. I think yeah. you, you should try and get to the guts of the coding as soon as possible. Well, this is what I thought. Cause it's always yeah. sort of des designing sort of rip off PlayStation Four or you know Xbox yeah. characters and then kind of putting it all together in a sort of a make make a game easy maker program type mm. thing. I can't, well, when I was know. at university, I shared the same building with the course who did this. I spoke to some of the people who did it, and it was more, oh yeah, I've had to render a forest scene today for this game that would be like this. And I was like, well, don't you do the characters? Don't you do the coding? To how? Oh no, no, we just design the characters. Like we don't do any of the coding or anything. Yeah. So I was a bit like, well, that's a bit pointless, isn't it? Now, obviously, yeah. I'm thinking things might change, but I mean, what do you think, Karis? Like um, stuff like Game Maker is fantastic for this sort of thing. Um, 
and people like professionally use it as well. So say Candy Crush Saga, I think that might might be made with Game Maker. So oh really? Maybe something like that. I and didn't it's know that. The original software is free that you can use on Windows. Yeah. Um, but that's just on the Windows platform. But you can also pay for licenses for um APK and iOS sort of files. Um, yes, for the uh, other mobile platforms. Yeah. Yeah, that will just show the base of it, and it's not too separate from something like Python, so it would be quite easy, well, it would be fairly easy to learn. <laughs> now, you mentioned Python. Now, Python is one of the sort of core programming languages that's kind of very much came on the scene with the Raspberry Pi, I guess. Yeah. Um, there's a couple of versions of it. Uh, there's, I think there's version... 2.3 and version 3 and the actual what do we call the syntax or the code the way it laid out on the page the way you type it is a little bit different between the two I mean which one do you prefer using? Um, I use Python 3 mostly because I'm I was sort of quite new to that yeah um, a couple of years ago and um, I sort of only learned about Python a few years ago um, so Python 2 is sort of for the um, coders who've used Python for quite a while and there's um, some slight different colouring code because Python shows colour um, when you've used certain types of code and yes. all, sorts of, all of that sorts of stuff. But if you're a new coder, definitely go for Python 3 because that will make life a lot easier. But this is obviously the point of the Raspberry Pi. It's the idea of a, a cheap single board computer that is the size of a credit card, if not smaller now, and you can just plug it in and it has... It depends what OS you use, but if you use a standard OS, which is Raspbian, then you've got that Python uh, code on there, and you can actually just start programming it, which was, I thought, a lovely idea. Yeah, and I mean, it's got quite a good um, GUI and stuff now. Um, I mean, yeah. I've seen the very, very old um, version of Raspbian, and that's okay, but it's a lot more um, user-friendly now. That's the version I first started, was one of the very early um, Raspbian versions because they've completely redesigned how that operating system works Definitely. now and it's right up there in sort of popularity especially in the coding community up there with windows it's almost as it's like everyone who's using pi is virtually using raspbian from what i've seen yeah yeah is um, that is that what you use at your club um yeah i use raspbian um, and i quite like using linux as well yes um, but that isn't so much at the raspberry jam um, no but Linux is brilliant. Okay. Yeah. Well. Uh, yeah. I'm not not going to argue with you there. <laughs> uh <laughs>